What are some of the most bizarre Bible verses that never get quoted? Bonus verse. Apparently the Bible had MMO style quests. The Lord answered. Bring me a heifer three years old, a she goat, three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove and a young pigeon. Genesis 15, 9. And a shrubbery. He that is wounded in the stones, or hath his privy member cut off, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Deuteronomy 23, 1. Does this include the sectomies? Nah, the stones are all good, it's just the plumbing is disconnected. Side note, funny how close Deuter is to Neuter. Your breasts are like two fawns, like twin fawns of a gazelle, that browse among the lilies. King Solomon's pick up lines, Song of Songs 4, 5. He goes on for a while after that with many other great pick up lines. IDK the exact verse but he says the same woman's neck is like the Tower of David. When two men are fighting and the wife of one of them intervenes to drag her husband clear of his opponent, if she puts out her hand and catches hold of the man by his privates, you must cut off her hand and show her no mercy. Dude, 25, 11. I appreciate that this was occurring often enough to specify it in biblical law, let alone with the addition of show her no mercy. Proverbs 21 19. It's better to live alone in the desert than with a quarrelsome. Complaining wife, nagging wives have existed for a long long time apparently. Do not dishonor your father by having sexual relations with your mother. She is your mother, do not have relations with her. Leviticus 18, 7. Modern translation. Don't frick your mom, just don't. She's your goddamn mother, don't frick her. The creep who stalked Jesus when he was arrested. 51 a young man, wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, 52 he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. Mark 14 51 52. Niv, go back to your employer. 6 your slave is in your hands. Abram said, do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarah mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. 7 the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. 8 and he said, Hagar, slave of Sare, where have you come from? And where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress Sare. She answered. 9 Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. Genesis 16, 6 9. Niv, selfish Onan. 7 But uh, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the Lord's sight, so the Lord put him to death. 8 Then Judah said to Onan, Sleep with your brother's wife and fulfill your duty to her as a brother-in-law to raise up offspring for your brother. 9 But Onan knew that the child would not be his, so whenever he slept with his brother's wife, he spilled his semen on the ground to keep from providing offspring for his brother. 10 What he did was wicked in the Lord's sight, so the Lord put him to death also. Genesis 38, 7 10, Niv. Onan's pull-out game was so strong he was killed by God. Someone just posted this in our Tinder. Psalm 137, 9. Happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. This was written by the exiled Jews who had been taken captive from Israel and sent to Babylon by the Babylonians. Their own children had just suffered exactly this at the hands of the Babylonians and they were clearly and understandably still bitter about it. John 11:35. Jesus wept. This is the shortest Bible verse. If you ever need to quote one, say, to get past the spider's curse, now you know. One time at a church event a man a part of a newly wed couple recited a bunch of verses and then sat next to his wife, who gave him a kiss. My dad recited this to my mom and made kissy noises. Then he went up from there to Bethel, and as he was going up by the way, young lads came out from the city and mocked him and said to him, go up, you bald head, go up. You bald head when he looked behind him and saw them. He cursed them in the name of the Lord. Then two female bears came out of the woods and tore up 42 lads of their number. And he went from there to Mount Carmel. And from there he returned to Samaria. 2 Kings 2 23 25. Don't insult a prophet's bald head. What always gets me about this verse is how specific they are with saying how many boys were killed. Not many. Not dozens. Nope. 42. Wherefore David arose and went, he and his men, and slew of the Philistines two hundred men, and David brought their foreskins, 
and they gave them in full tale to the king, that he might be the king's son-in-law, and Saul gave him Michael his daughter to wife, 1 Samuel 18:27. Guess heads weren't good enough. What had happened was Saul really didn't like David, so he gave David the challenge of returning with 100 Philistine foreskins in order to marry Michael. His goal was to get David brutally murdered by the Philistines. David likely knew what Saul was trying to do and brought back to 100 just to show him up. A woman must not wear men's clothing, nor a man wear women's clothing. For the Lord your God detests anyone who does this. Deuteronomy 22 5 Ever watch a fight and a crazy GF jumps in and grabs a dude by his dong? Yeah me neither, but God hates that apparently. When men fight with one another, and the wife of the one draws near to rescue her husband from the hand of him who is beating him, and puts out her hand and seizes him by the private parts, then you shall cut off her hand. Deuteronomy 25, 11 12 inches. Here's a story about a man who got assassinated, possibly on the toilet, who was so fat the killer couldn't the knife back out, from Judges 3. 20 Ehud then approached him while he was sitting alone in the upper room of his palace and said, I have a message from God for you. As the king rose from his seat, 21 Ehud reached with his left hand, drew the sword from his right thigh and plunged it into the king's belly. 22 Even the handle sank in after the bleed, and his bowels discharged. Ehud did not pull the sword out, and the fat closed in over it. 23 Then Ehud went out to the porch. He shut the doors of the upper room behind him and locked them. Eglon, the fat king in this story, wasn't found dead for some time because his servants thought he was taking a super long dump, and they waited past the point of embarrassment before finally going in. Genesis 19. 31 One day the older daughter said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man around here to give us children, as is the custom all over the earth. 32 Let's get our father to drink wine and then sleep with him and preserve our family line through our father. 33 That night they got their father to drink wine, and the older daughter went in and slept with him. He was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. 34 The next day the older daughter said to the younger, Last night I slept with my father. Let's get him to drink wine again tonight, and you go in and sleep with him so we can preserve our family line through our father. 35 So they got their father to drink wine that night also, and the younger daughter went in and slept with him. Again he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. 36 So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the carcatrice den. Isaiah 11, 8, King James Version KJV. Judges 11, 1 2. Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty warrior. His father was Gilead. His mother was a prostitute. Two Gilead's wife also bore him sons, and when they were grown up, they drove Jephthah away. You are not going to get any inheritance in our family, they said, because you are the son of another woman. A good friend of mine and I were instructed for a songwriting class to write a song about anything, so long as it was based in scripture. We were having serious writer's block so I told her to just open the bible, and I'd point, and we'd write a song about whatever verse we landed on. This is the one we got. The chorus starts go away you bastard son and it's very upbeat. Go away my bastard son. There'll be peace when you are gone. Lay your weary head to rest. And don't you cry no more. Guitar solo. Most of the bible is pretty freaking bizarre when you actually sit down and read it. Comma 2 Kings 2 23 24. Comma from there Elisha went up to Bethel. While he was on his way, some small boys came out of the city and jeered at him. Go up. Bald head they shouted, go up, bald head the prophet turned and saw them, and he cursed them in the name of the Lord. Then two shebas came out of the woods and tore 42 of the children to pieces. Some kids make fun of a bald man. So God sent two bears to fricking kill 42 kids. Judges 1:19. Comma the Lord was with the men of Judah. They took possession of the hill country, but they were unable to drive the people from the plains, because they had chariots fitted with iron. The all-powerful creator of the universe couldn't handle some chunks of iron. Mark 11 12 25. Comma the next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. 
Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. Jesus peed a plant for not bearing fruit out of season. Jesus was no botanist, that's for sure. There's a great hadith about Mohammed going to date groves and asking why the workers were fertilizing the dates. They tell him it's because it increases the harvest and he responds that he thinks they should just leave it. The next season they get hardly any dates and Muhammad is like why did you take my advice? I know nothing about plants it's fantastic. Ezekiel 4, 9. God tells Ezekiel, take wheat and barley, beans and lentils, millet and spelt, put them in a storage jar and use them to make bread for yourself. 12 eat the food as you would a loaf of barley bread. Bake it in the sight of the people, using human excrement for fuel. 14 Then I said, Not so, Sovereign Lord, I have never defiled myself. From my youth until now I have never eaten anything found dead or torn by wild animals. No impure meat has ever entered my mouth. 15 Very well, God, said, I will let you bake your bread over cow dung instead of human excrement. At my Christian college my friends and I referred to this as holy crap. And Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursedst is withered away. Mark 11:21. Jesus curses a fig tree for not having figs, even though it isn't fig season. God hates figs. Proverbs 13:24. He who fails to use a stick hates his son, but he who loves him is careful to discipline him. If you don't beat your kids you don't love them. Until the moral improvert. The beatings shall continue. Got. People like to gloss over the fact that the Old Testament gives detailed instructions on how to obtain slaves. Christians would emphasis the nissi nissi debt slavery of Israelites, but downplay the parts that say non-Israelites could be kept as full-fledged property for life. This is not just something that happened back then. It is explicitly written as code for Israelites and is the word of God. God permits slavery. Leviticus 25. 4446. As for the male and female slaves whom you may have, it is from the nations around you that you may acquire male and female slaves. 45 You may also acquire them from among the aliens residing with you, and from their families that are with you, who have been born in your land, and they may be your property. 46 You may keep them as a possession for your children after you, for them to inherit as property. These you may treat as slaves, but as for your fellow Israelites, no one shall rule over the other with harshness. The last part is key. You don't rule over Israelites I with harshness, but non-Israelites, yeah, just don't seriously injure them. By this code, slavery in the new world was justified with some adjustments in how you treat them. Yeah, just don't seriously injure them. If I recall correctly, there was no punishment for beating your slaves to death as long as it took them more than two days to die. 1 Samuel 5 and 6 the Philistines captured the Ark of the Lord and got stricken with hemorrhoids as a punishment. To be cured, they had to send the Ark of the Lord back and to make 5 golden hemorrhoids and 5 golden mice to honor the Lord. I want golden hemorrhoids. The whole of Zechariah is just so weird. They keep going on about these magical mangoes that reside in the forest of Bethrunj Herazeb and how if you eat enough you develop all these crazy abilities like being able to carry large stones with a single finger. I mean the whole thing is basically about these freaking mangoes and it's ridiculously detailed. There's a little part on how you should murder people immediately if you catch them in the act of stealing your trinkets. But it's mostly mangoes. Dang. That's a crazy name for a forest. 2 Kings 18:27. But Rabshakeh said unto them, Hath my master sent me to thy master, and to thee, to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to the men which sit on the wall, that they may eat their own dung, and drink their own pee with you? Nor the last supper nor the first, but still notable. Exodus 4:24-26. On the way to Egypt, at a place where Moses and his family had stopped for the night, the Lord confronted him and was about to kill him. But Moses' wife, Zipporah, took a flint knife and circumcised her son. She touched Moses' feet with the foreskin and said, Now you are a bridegroom of blood to me. After that, the Lord left him alone. Martin Luther's commentary on this passage basically says well, that happened. Moving on. 1 Corinthians 7, 1 9. Now for the matters you wrote about, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman, 
that since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife, and each woman with her own husband. The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body but yields it to his wife. Do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time, so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. I say this as a concession, not as a command. I wish that all of you were as I am. But each of you has your own gift from God. Now to the unmarried and the widows I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried, as I do. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Translation, you should be like me, Paul, and not let your boner distract you from serving God. But if you can't do that, commit to one person to avoid the temptation to sleep around. Genesis 6, 4, Niv. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. Not so bizarre, but interesting since this made me wonder if this is perhaps a reference to Olympian gods or similar deities that were the focus of other religions. What adds to my interest in this verse as well is because it seemed to be randomly placed in the midst of describing humanity's wickedness before the flood. I'm not religious, still figuring out that part of myself, but I'm interested in learning more about Christianity and how it fits in with other systems of belief. Genesis 38, 8 10. 8, and Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. 9. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his, and it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. 10. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. So basically dude pulled out and God killed him for it, and out of his brother's wife at that. Pretty much anything from the Song of Solomon, especially if it's from the New World version of the Bible, if I remember correctly, that's also the version that has the verse about the marshmallow. Bonus, there is a picture someone did of what the woman described would literally look like. I would like to see that picture. A lot of the weird Old Testament Jewishy rules actually have meaning to them, like no pork or shellfish. Back then they didn't breed diseases away and cook things safely. The way they're supposed to plant crops, it's so you don't deplete the soil of nutrients. No gay stuff. Dude, we are a fledgling species. Create kids. We need soldiers, and farmers, and numbers to combat plagues. That's all these weird rules are. Archaic rules. They're no longer necessary to the times and culture yet you stick em in a holy book and extremists can't be bothered to think. Thanks for putting it in words. Matthew 25, 31 46 The sheep and the goats. 31 When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. 32 All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. 33 He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. 34 Then the king will say to those on his right, Come. You who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world 35 for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat, I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink, I was a stranger and you invited me in, 36 I needed clothes and you clothed me, I was sick and you looked after me, I was in prison and you came to visit me, 37 then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? 38 When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? 39 When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? 40 The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. 41 Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. 42 For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat, I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. 43 I was a stranger and you did not invite me in, 
I needed clothes and yos 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 44 they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison, and did not help you? 45 he will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. 46 then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is actually one of my favorite Bible passages. If you need your ANR blessed by the Lord, as a loving deer and a graceful doe, let her breasts satisfy you at all times, and always be enraptured with her love. Proverbs 5:19. Isaiah 34, 7, KJV, and the unicorns shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. And the Lord saith, Periods, ick, and if a woman have an issue, and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days, and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the even, and everything that she leath upon in her separation shall be unclean, everything also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean, and whosoever toucheth her bed shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. And whosoever toucheth anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. And if it be on her bed, or on anything whereon she sitteth, when he toucheth it, he shall be unclean until the even. And if any man lie with her at all, and her flowers be upon him, he shall be unclean seven days, and all the bed whereon he leath shall be unclean. And if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation, or if it run beyond the time of her separation, all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation, she shall be unclean. Every bed whereon she leath all the days of her issue shall be unto her as the bed of her separation, and whatsoever she sitteth upon shall be unclean, as the uncleanness of her separation, and whosoever toucheth those things shall be unclean, and shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. But if she be cleansed of her issue, then she shall number to herself seven days, and after that she shall be clean, and on the eighth day she shall take unto her two turtles, or two young pigeons, and bring them unto the priest, to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for her before the Lord for the issue of her uncleanness. Leviticus 15 19, 30. And if a man shall lie with a woman having her sickness, and shall uncover her nakedness, he hath discovered her fountain, and she hath uncovered the fountain of her blood, and both of them shall be cut off from among their people. Leviticus 20:18. But if a man be just, and do that which is lawful and right, and hath not, come near to a menstruous woman. Ezekiel 18, 5, 6. Thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth. Isaiah 30, 22. We are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rag. Isaiah 64, 6. Jerusalem hath grievously sinned. They have seen her nakedness, yea, she seeth, and turneth backward. Her filthiness is in her skirts. Lamentations 1, 8, 9. Jerusalem is as a menstruous woman. Lamentations 1, 17. Dang. Women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says. If they want to inquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home. For it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. 1 Corinthians 14 34 35 There she lusted after her lovers, whose genitals were like those of donkeys and whose omission was like that of horses. Ezekiel 23 20 Look, I have two daughters, virgins both of them, let me bring them out to you and you can do what you like with them, but do nothing to these men because they have come under the shelter of my roof. Psalm 38, 7, King James Version because it's the funniest, for my loins are filled with a loathsome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. You can thank the lovely Time Hawkins for that one. Ezekiel 23 20, there she lusted after her lovers, whose genitals were like those of donkeys and whose omission was like that of horses. Lev 1913, comma do not hold back the wages of a hired worker overnight. The clear intention is that an employee should be paid on the day the work is done, 
rather than having to wait for a paycheck at the end of a b-weekly, semi-monthly, or whatever pay period. I'm surprised that this doesn't get quoted as a worker's right more often. If it is really necessary to have pay periods less often than daily, then a suitable alternative is to pay the employee on the payday prior to their work rather than the payday after their work, and use the succeeding payday for pay adjustment as necessary. Many people are poor when they start their work, so having to wait beyond the day of work for their pay was banned in the Holy Bible for good reason. Revelations 3.16 Ask a living thing that crawleth on the ground go through the eye of this needle. It will not do it. A wise man will know why. Thou shalt not hesitate to separate children from their parents when they are fleeing persecution. Sessions 2. 145. American Standard Version. Bring the best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. Do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. Exodus 23:19. I don't remember the exact verse but there's this story of a guy who was possessed and his demons were cast into pigs, who promptly jumped off a cliff. I don't have a verse, s, but there's a part of the bible, the song of Solomon where all it is is talking about a soon to be married couple and how they can't wait to have sex with each other a bunch when they're married. There are even more PG-13 slash rated R parts of the bible though I just can't remember them off the top of my head. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. Bye for now.